I'm Dr. Luke Howard, and I'm a consultant pulmonologist here at One Welbeck Lung Health. I have a particular interest in blood clots in the lungs, pulmonary hypertension, and also exercise physiology, and of course, more recently, uh, the impact of COVID uh, on the respiratory system. COVID, of course, is primarily a respiratory illness, but it can affect all organs in the body. Still, many of the symptoms that people face following COVID and the ones that we see uh, relate to breathlessness. Often it's a feeling of not being able to get a full breath in, almost a kind of air hunger. But we also see the inability for people to exercise. They often get fatigued or they get muscle aches or muscle pains or just a sense of not being able to do what they could do before they contracted COVID. But sometimes also presenting to us as lung doctors are going to be things like chest pains, particularly on breathing uh, and on exertion. The three main pieces of advice that I give to patients uh, are really that, look, you are not alone uh, and there are a lot of people out there who are suffering the same symptoms symptoms as you and we are learning a huge amount uh, as we go forward. The whole scientific community is committed to understanding more uh, and to helping you and others get over this. The second piece of advice uh, that I give is for people to understand that ultimately the vast majority of people are going to get over this and it is going to be a matter of time uh, but you have to make sure that you work with us so that we can understand what you haven't got as opposed to what you might have and then finally again with the theme that this is going to be a slow process which requires patience uh, is I say just build yourself a structure start to do things regularly try to get regular sleep patterns try to get regular exercise patterns and try to diarize things uh, and measure them sometimes when you're so close up to a problem you can't see daily change but if you track your progress you can see weekly change so one of the things i suggest to people uh, is to use things like wearables so i've got my aura ring here for example that helps you understand sleep patterns uh, and heart rate responses so have something that you can look back on and say yes I've made progress and I'm getting better. I think probably every symptom uh, that anyone has ever had has been pretty much been covered uh, and got some kind of attention. What interests me more is how symptoms potentially cluster and I think that's where we're going to get the most advances uh, in how we treat long COVID and post COVID syndromes. We tend to operate a little bit in silos. We have the cardiologists and the pulmonologists but actually there's a lot of heart-lung interaction uh, and heart-lung kidney interaction that doesn't get talked about and that's why we need to ultimately provide some kind of multidisciplinary team interaction going forward to help patients uh, to, re to fully recover. So what might you expect when you're referred to a pulmonologist to investigate symptoms of breathlessness following COVID? Well of course breathlessness can come from a whole different set of problems that can be lung related or heart related uh, or nervous system related uh, or even related to stress and anxiety. So it's important for us to try and first of all unpick what it isn't. We might also have to refer to our heart colleagues uh, or undertake heart tests ourselves to ensure that the heart isn't at the root of the problem. But once you've really given the all clear uh, to all of those potential problems, then we're really looking into a more of a, a rehabilitation uh, exercise and hopefully at the end of that uh, back to uh, near full recovery or full recovery. People always want to know how long long COVID will go on for. And I think that people are always concerned, even before they've reached 12 weeks following their initial diagnosis, that they may be entering a period of long COVID. And I think we do need to make sure that we reassure people in the early stages that they may not be progressing to that. I think from what we know, from other post-viral syndromes, the vast majority of people will recover uh, over a period of a year or so. It's a nasty virus, it's going to be a, a, a long journey, but it's going to be a journey with a destination, which is ultimately getting back to normal.